Hey, this is Roxy. You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. So listen up, bitches. All right, we are back, and we're joined by Roxy Laveau, also known as Nikki Rocks. Welcome to In Your Head. Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing good. How are you guys? Pretty good, pretty good. Now, I guess it's just Roxy. Now, you, you dropped the Laveau part a while back. Yeah, yeah, they dropped it. I think it was right after they took my hair. <laughs> right. Um, are you officially done with TNA? Yes, yes, I was released about a week ago. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, whose decision was that? Because some people say, like, you want to leave, and some people let go. Oh, no, 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 it was not my, uh, not my idea at all. Um, I loved being at TNA, and uh, I, it was a great experience, but that was a uh, creative decision. Mm-hmm. You, um, do you ever see yourself coming back? I would love to go back if they would have me. I think that the girls that they have there are amazing, and um, I think that we did really good at building a knockout division, uh, being the beginning, being a beginning of it. And um, I would I would love to be back there and work with the girls again. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we've had you know um, Awesome Kong on the show, ODB, uh, a lot of the knockouts, you know, and they always talk about like being really proud of the knockout division. Uh, would you'd say the same? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, we have a lot of tough, tough girls, and a lot of lot. They, they're most of the girls are very, very different, which is great. And uh, I think it's good to have a little bit of a mix, and then to show that the girls can hang just as well as the guys can. And it makes me really proud to have been a part of it. Yeah, um, we actually have uh, someone's been wanting to call in all week, and uh, I think she's even staying up late because it's past her bedtime. We got Julie on the line. Hi. Hi, Hi Julie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I have a few questions for you. I'm a big fan, okay. by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have any advice for young women aspiring to be pro wrestlers? Uh, yeah. Uh, being When you're first getting in, it's really, really tough. And it's something that looks like while you're sit- like if you're a fan and stuff and you're sitting and watching, you're like, well, I could do that. But then once you get in there, it's tough. It's really, really hard. And the best thing to do is kind of try to just stick with it. And for me, I trained with all guys the majority of my career, and I still do. Um, it's probably better to train with a lot of the guys at first than it is with the girls to get toughened up. <laughs> yeah. Um, another question I have, what was it like getting your first steel chair to your head? The first what? I'm sorry. The first steel chair to your head? The first chair to my head? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was off. <laughs> it rings in your brain for about a good three days. <laughs> so uh, that was never really fun. Um, I actually did it the first time on independent shows that I wrestled north around here in New Hampshire for Steve Bradley. And uh, those were really, really rough. Like, people always think that the chairs are, like, get their work, get, shoot, like something's happened to them that, that makes it easier. But they're never... Anything that makes it easy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anytime when uh, when you're doing something like that, do any of the uh, promoters or anybody say, like, uh, you know, the girls shouldn't be taking chair shots or something like that? No, I wish they would. Because <laughs> 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 I would totally be for it. But normally they like to get the shock factor that something like that is actually happening to a girl or there's a girl that's tough enough that is, they can take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the other question? Uh, did I cut you off, Julia? Oh, no. Um, my other question is, what is it like working with Awesome Kong and cheerleader Melissa? Working with Awesome Kong is like working with a freight train. She is um, full force 100% of the time, but it's amazing. She's one of my favorite people to re- to wrestle with. Um, she makes you work really, really hard, and you work really. she works hard for you, too, so usually you can get a great match out of it. And certainly to Melissa, she's pretty she's pretty rough herself. And uh, working with her has been great. I've worked a lot of shows just recently with her down in Jersey for Jersey All Pro Women, and it was we had some really great matches. And I love getting in the ring with her. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for calling thank in, Julia. You. Yep. Uh, would you like to see her get a run as cheerleader Melissa in uh, TNA? I would for sure. I think that she's gorgeous and she's in great shape. And I think that she would be a, a good addition to the knockout. Yeah. Uh, Barbie, you got a question? 
Yeah, you mentioned you're not a big fan of chair shots, so presumably being like the hardcore knockout probably wasn't your idea. Who did that come from? <laughs> Uh, that was mostly creative. It wasn't a lot of my idea. Um, if you ever see any of my old indie wrestling, I'm more of like if I work with bigger girls, I can be a high flyer, I can be a grappler, I can basically mold to whatever is needed for the match. Because Nikki but, rocks. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the hardcore stuff wasn't really my idea. Uh, well, actually, when you first came in and you were doing the uh, the voodoo gimmick, like, uh, what did you think of that? And like. Um, were you already with TNA and they they gave you that gimmick, or did they think like you'd fit the gimmick? Like, how did it come about? Um, I actually uh, had worked a show in New York for uh, 2CW Squared Circle Wrestling, and Abyss was working on the show also. And I had asked him to watch my match, and he was a fan of what I could do in the ring. So, in creative meetings, this is what I heard. I, I wasn't there, but in creative meetings, they were saying they needed a girl for this for that spot. And he kept bringing me up, and then um, it was actually TNA's idea to do it. And it was it, it was really, really fun to do. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it's great to be able to take a whole other personality, and I think by the end of it, before I got my head, she was really comfortable with it. Like, did they have any ideas to uh, do some more voodoo stuff with it? Like, maybe you could have stood outside the ring and, uh, I don't know, poked, like, needles and, like, a voodoo doll of the opponent? Um. I'm not sure if they did, uh, like, I, I'm not positive if they did for sure, but um, a lot of stuff that came about were a couple of ideas that BG James would come up with or I would come up with, and then some of them were just ideas that creative would come up with. I'm not sure if they actually wanted to go full voodoo or if they just wanted me to be creepy, but I kind of just tried to do what I could with what I was given. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, we got another call here. Uh, we got Joel from uh, Portugal. Hello. I'm sorry about that. No how are you doing? Can you hear me? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm well. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm, I have two quick questions to you. Um, as uh, we know, uh, you left TNA, um, and uh, I really would like to know uh, about um, gimmick-wise. Sometimes um, they trademark the gimmicks, the names of the wrestlers. Uh, from that standpoint, was it was it a peaceful... Um, did you live peacefully in terms of, uh, of about the contracts, about the gimmick names, about the, all the trademark thing? Wasn't uh, they didn't uh, try to uh, trademark anything from you? Uh, no, not that I know of. But um, the name Roxy Laveau was actually, I think, from them. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that they own it. I see. Um, but my next question, my second question is: um, Now that you are you're free, now you can work uh, with, uh, for. Uh, whichever promotion you would like to go. Is there any promotion really uh, in the United States or elsewhere outside of the United States that you would like to work for? Um, I would love to get into WWE. I would love to go back to TNA. Um, I also mm. wouldn't mind going to Japan or Mexico. For me, I, I kind of just love to do what I do and would love to do it anywhere. I see. Well, Have you worked you. in other countries? Uh, yeah, I worked in Japan. I worked in Mexico for a good year and a half. I, I pretty much lived down near there. I, I pretty much lived there for the time that I was there. Uh, well, uh, what are the different styles like, like uh, wrestling in Japan? How's it different from wrestling in the United States or you know, wrestling in Mexico? For, uh, Japan is really, um, it, there's a big language barrier in both places. Um, but Japan was a real lot of fun. I got the honor of working with Aja Kong, which was amazing to me because growing up she was great. Um, but I, uh, I think in Japan, it's a lot of, uh, hard hitting and a lot of big, big moves. And then in Mexico, it's a lot of, uh, being really, really quick and fast. And they're really, really, really strong down there too. It's a, it's a lot of strong style down there. Mm -hmm. Did you ever wrestle with a mask on when you were in Mexico? No, I begged, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> I guess it would be bad if someone actually came up to you and said, you know, you'd be a lot better if you had a mask on. Yeah, but for me, I think it would be really fun. It's like a, the same with the voodoo stuff. It's like a whole different character, so it's a lot of fun to do. So yeah. I saw all the girls doing it, and I was like, please. And they were, no, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> uh, when you were doing the voodoo gimmick, did you, uh, how was it working with VKM? It was amazing. Um, working with BG and Kip is great because they're both, uh, 
with all the knowledge that BG has with his family being in wrestling for so long and with Kip being in wrestling as long as he has been, it's, it was great. Like, I got to sit ringside and watch how they put together a match or if something went wrong in the ring, what they would do and how they worked towards the cameras and stuff like that. So it was really, I learned so much just being ringside with them. And then afterwards, Kip still, Kip and BG still helped me out with matches that I was having with the girls. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, who else we got? We got Andrew here. Um, I just wanted to know if there was um, any talk of putting the TNA title on you, the knockout title. Well, I don't think so. Now it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are you calling in, from, Andrew? Here. What? Where are you calling in from? This is Afro. I know. Where, where are you from, though? <laughs> oh, um, United Kingdom. Oh, okay. Well met. Well met. A yeah, tiny Jack. little city in Europe. Yes. You can't narrow it down. Were. Oh, I was just trying to make conversation. Anyway, thanks for calling in, Andrew. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> You'll never get that name yeah. right, Jack. Uh, the charisma <laughs> just, just pours out of the man. <laughs> Andrew, do you have a question from the board? Oh, yeah, I got the mean, nasty question. I just uh, want to know... Cause I've heard some rumors on the internet and everything that you had some sort of altercation with a uh, Rocket Khan. Is there any uh, truth to that? Uh, there was there was an incident with me and Rocket Khan, and uh, what happens is in wrestling sometimes stuff if there's miscommunications in the ring and people will get hurt because, like everybody says, it's wrestling and not ballet. And uh, both of us were um, hit in the middle of the match, and there was a, um, some stuff that was said backstage. It wasn't, like, as blown out of proportion as everybody has, had made it. And at the end of everything, her and I are actually, we ended up being friends, and we hugged afterwards and realized that it was just a mis- miscommunication and everything was set. Mm-hmm. So, there's, like, if I saw her walking down the street, me and her would just say hi and be friends and stuff like that. I, I was at other TVs with her. So it was kind of just kind of blown out of proportion. Well, what are your opinions on, like, uh, Internet websites uh, that report the news? Do you think they do a good job, or do you think, um, you know, a lot of it is blown out of proportion or just made up? Or what do you think about them? I think they're about 50-50. Sometimes some of the stuff you get off there is absolutely correct, and then some of the stuff you get off there, a lot of people like drama and kind of, like I said, blow things out of proportion. And so... You're watching like a violent soap opera where people are having drama and fighting and stuff like that. So drama is a part of it, and I just think that that kind of gets involved in the story, in the stories that are put online. Uh, who else we got here? We got Dwayne on the line. Hi. <laughs> you have a, you have a question, Dwayne? Are you just calling in to say hello? No, uh, I just want to know uh, how do you like working for Shimmer? I love Shimmer. Shimmer is a great, great company, and um, he really does a good job. Dave Prezak does a great job of showcasing all the girls. And even while I was in TNA, I made sure that I could still make the majority of his shows. Um, I think that the product that he gives is great because it's more of just girls going out there and kicking ass and not really worrying about how they look. Do you think Dave should stay with the blonde hair, or do you think he should go back to his original color? <laughs> I think he can rock the blonde. I yeah. think he's got no problem with it. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a, he's a bitch in blonde. He can do it. <laughs> I think if he shaves his head, all he has to do is, like, squint really hard, and another ponytail just flies out of that thing. Hmm. <laughs> he, he might be able to. I'm not sure. I'm going to ask him to do it next time I see him. If someone was just getting into Shimmer, is there any particular, like, DVD you'd recommend they should uh, pick up? Um, it's hard to say because there's so many of them that are great. You know what I mean? Like, if, if it's not, um, like, the main event matches, that the majority of those are insane. They have Sarah Del Rey versus, like, Awesome Kong and stuff like that. And I've, I've worked Awesome Kong on a couple of the DVDs, and me and Sarah Del Rey have worked a couple times. So I think any one that they want to pick up would be a good one. Mm-hmm. Or if you you got to look on the back and see if Nikki Rocks is on it. Yeah, look for that first, and then yes, hook yes. it up. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got Jose on the line. Hey, what's going on? 
All right. Hey, um, man, I'm sorry to hear you left DNA, but my question to you was, do you have any, you know, any plans to join, like, uh, other federations like um, AAA, you know, in, uh, in Mexico? I would love to. I would love to get down there and work. It's just a matter of contacting the people and stuff like that, but I, I would love to. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, you're so young and you, still, you can still hone the rest, most of your skills, you know, or, uh, or I don't know, maybe join that, that Mark at WrestleLicious, you know, he's starting this promotion, this kid that won this, all this money from the lottery and uh, he's got all these dealers, all these wrestlers. Oh, yeah. I would totally, I would totally wrestle there. I could pull off a voodoo gimmick on TNA. I can do anything there. Of course, yeah. You're very talented, you know. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah, that was it. All right, Mark. All right. I actually heard they were uh, starting up a new glow. I don't know if uh, you'd have any interest in that. I- are they? I heard that they were doing that, and then I saw the Wrestlelicious too, which was great with Jimmy Hart and stuff. I thought that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, good stuff. Did you, you do uh, a sweet rap? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Glow is uh, famous for their uh, their great rap intros. Yeah, that's what they have at Wrestlelicious too. Uh, like uh, when you were growing up, did you watch Glow? Um, I did a little bit. I also watched a lot of Wow, um, but a lot of my stuff, uh, the people that I kind of watched the majority of was was a lot of the guys. Yeah. I was uh, a big fan of all the wrestling. <laughs> when you said um you were training with the guys, um, were they harder on you because you were a girl or were they did they try to go easy on you because you were a girl? Well it was any majority of the guys, um, once they got to know me they just figure a lot of times I'm just treated like one of the guys. But um if I was ever in there with any of the boys that decided that they were going to take it easy, I would make it hard. <laughs> <laughs> Right. There's there's no reason for me to be treated any different in the ring just because mm-hmm. I'm a female. Like a lot of the times on the independents up here, I'll wrestle a lot of the guys just because it's hard to see female workers around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the show I saw you at, you uh, well, you wrestled the guy who was uh, was a male manager. <laughs> yes, I wrestled Marshall. <laughs> that was one of my favorite matches. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's great. He's a great he's a great manager and a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, he's the man. He was getting a lot of heat at the show. Yeah, he's great. I, I really have a lot of fun r- wrestling with him. Yeah. Uh, area code 631. I'm not sure who you are. Hello? Hello. Who, who are you? Hi, this is Costa from New York. All right. Uh, I've been a big um, Nicky Rocks fan since um, Killer Babe is a baseball hunter, so I kind of linger longer. I've been a fan of hers for a very long time. And just wondering what did she think about the uh, the petition that's going on to save her job, to get her job back, and her new official website, uh, roxy-laveau.org. Uh, I thought that was really, really sweet. I'm pretty sure the girl that started my site actually uh, had started that up, and I thought it was really uh, it was really sweet for me to see all those people that were supporting me. It really means a lot. We'll have the link right on the website in case anybody out there can't spell. You can just click right on the link. Yeah. there's a, there's like She has a little picture right on the, on the left-hand side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I'll, I'm punching out. Thanks. All right. We saw you All right. Thank you so much for being a supporter. I appreciate it. No problem. Does that make you proud when um, like fans sign like a petition like that? Uh, yeah, it means it, it actually meant a lot to see that that was up there because I really had no idea, and then all of a sudden I went there to uh, check to see if she did an update for me and. I saw it there, and I was like, oh, my God, that is so sweet. I thought it was really nice. Yeah. Um, also, you can check out Roxy on her MySpace, which is myspace.com slash wrestling rocks with two X's. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I rock that much harder. Exactly. <laughs> um, like, if fans are, uh, they add you as a friend, um, if they send a message or post a comment, are you going to comment back? I. What I do is I try to answer the majority of the emails that I get. Um, right. Sometimes with comments, it's a little bit harder to get back and forth with that, but I usually answer the majority of the emails that I get. Mm-hmm. There's also the Twitter, which is twitter.com slash Roxy Nikki. Yes, but he actually took Nikki Rock, so I was like, what, really? <laughs> yeah. Damn that. Uh, yeah, so- I was upset. Yeah, and you can you can go there and you can see uh, Awesome Kong and Roxy and uh, 
Melissa and uh, Taylor Wilde, and they, they're tweeting back and forth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're a bunch of crazy ones. Right. There's also Alice in Danger that's on there and a couple other people, too. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got Jai on the line. Jai. Hey. Come on, Jai. That's, uh, that's your cue, buddy. <laughs> How did you like uh, Chaotic? Um, I actually really enjoyed wrestling for Chaotic. A lot of my buddies are still there. I uh, train there as much as I can whenever time will let me do that. Um, I think that the product they have is pretty good, and the guys that they have are phenomenal. Um, I actually had the honor of wrestling um, against Max Bauer and Alex Arion while I was there, which was great. Anything else, Joe? Uh, no. Uh, thanks. I thought you said you had two questions. No. He lied. Oh, man. Never trust that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You sounded very excited to be on the line. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I listed uh, charisma from all the guys that call in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tugboat from our message board, Toot Toot. He wants to know, whose idea was it for you to shave your head? It was actually uh, TNA's idea, and um, they called me and asked me if I would have a problem with it. And for me, I figure... Well, there was two reasonings with it. The first one being that it would make me different from the other girls that are wrestling there. So um, I was all for that. Uh, well, there's actually three. Second, I wouldn't have to do my hair. And then mm. thirdly, they offered me money. So <laughs> it was I was all for it. Right. <laughs> now, I remember when that happened, and there, there was, like, a lot of blood involved. Now, was that from the um, from the shaving, or was that from uh, the, the hit on the ladder? It was from the ladder. Actually, yeah, it was really early in the match, too. I think it was just to push his ladder, and it just hit me in the right spot, and I busted open. <laughs> I was like, oh, great, my brain's falling out. This is great. Uh, like, uh, after you had it shaved, what, what was like? Uh, what did you think about it immediately? Did you think, oh, this is a good look, or did, did it take you a while to get used to? Oh, no. I was like, after that, I can rock the shit out of this. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I loved it. It was like... Uh, I, I got to pull off the G.I. Jane, Natalie Port type of thing. I was all for it. Uh, you've uh, you've kept the hair pretty short. Um, you think you're going to keep it that way? You think it'll ever grow it back out? Um, I'm going to try to grow it a little bit, but I end up getting really finicky with it after a while because it's just whenever you're growing your hair out, you get through processes where you're just like, okay, this is not okay, and you just start trying to do something different with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So we got Swax on the line. I think Swax will bring the charisma. What's going on, people? <laughs> uh, how you doing, Roxy? Hey, how are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I got a couple questions. Uh, mm-hmm. First, uh, I am a huge Gail Kim fan, and I just wanted to know on how it felt to work with her for three years when she was employed by TNA. Um, funny story, I'm a huge Kim fan also. And uh, wrestling with her was amazing. Um, she was my third match ever on the independent scene, actually, for a company called WXW, which is AFA. She did an Elite Eight, and that was uh, the third match I'd ever had. And then wrestling with her at TNA was amazing. She's she's so athletic and great in the ring. Well, they were comparing Gail Kim to be like a female AJ Styles or a female Rob Van Dam. Wouldn't you agree with the type of caliber talent that she got? For sure. she's there's. I, I don't think there's very much that that girl cannot do. If you ask her if she can do a move, normally she can. Or if you ask her to do anything athletically, she can do it. <laughs> and second uh, question is that... Um, TNA lockdown was recently in Philadelphia where I live at and it was kind of disappointing that you wasn't uh, put in at the time the queen of the cage match with ODB and Madison Rain and uh, Sojourner Bolt and um, who, who was the other one that was in there? Daphne. Um, yeah, Daphne. Daphne. You, you, you would have really fit into that match and you would have made the match like twice as entertaining because you would have used the cage and you would have went all out. Oh, thank you. I wish I could have been there. (laughs) Were you supposed to be booked at the time when uh, this happened or because of 
you were um, no, released? No, or? I, was, I wasn't released at the time, but I was home at the time, so I wasn't a part of the storylines at that time. So they were using different girls when they booked that match. Well, what did you because, think? Because they, uh, they were going to switch. Okay, because they were uh, thinking about, you know, not uh, putting you in storylines at the time. And I was saying, why isn't Roxy put into this storyline, uh, especially when they came to a big match like the Queen of the Cage, which is a, a real big match among the knockouts? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that was completely up to creative. That didn't really have much to do with me, and uh, I really know what was going on at the time. Uh, actually, when Daphne came in, uh, what did you think of the, the governor giving me? <laughs> it was hilarious, and she did great with what she was given. Um, she's a great wrestler and a great uh, – she does great with characters, so I think that she did an amazing job with it. I saw, well, we saw her wrestle at, um, in Charlotte at uh, – was at the Fan Fest last year, and she's wrestling with ODB, and she was doing all the ODB mannerisms. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's great when she gets in the ring. She's a little bit crazy, and I love it. It's one of my. I think that she's she's one of my favorites to be around because she's just as crazy in the back. Yeah. Uh, thanks for well, also uh, one one last uh, question. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, anticipations working with uh, WEW uh, to go like to the ECW arena in Philadelphia to work? Um, I'm not sure about that. I haven't really been contacted by them. So if I was contacted, I probably would do it. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, your answers, uh, Roxy. No problem. Thanks for calling. Let's go in, Swax. Okay, thank you. Very good, man. Uh, when you said you watched uh, a lot of the male wrestlers like uh, growing up, was there anybody in particular? Um, when I started watching, I loved Eddie Guerrero. Like, I still do. I think he's so incredible. He did amazing. I was also always a big fan of Kurt Angle because Kurt was trained by the, one of the same people that trained me. Mm-hmm. So I always thought his work was incredible. Um, Barbie, you got a question from the board? I do indeed. One of our fans, Changed Man, knocks one out of left field when he asks, what music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to just about anything. I, um, I'm really, uh, I love indie rock, and I'm really into like um, a little bit of metal and hardcore at the same time. So I kind of really mix it up. If you grab my iPod, it would be really crazy. <laughs> I like your current look with uh, this kind of. How, what, what do you call that? The uh, like the the color you wear. It's like the red and the. Uh... Oh, my plaid. That's a yeah, little bit plaid. of punk. Yeah. Yep, a little bit of my punk that's in there too. Is that like is that um, like more like you personally, or is that just uh, something you thought would look good? Or aside from the cursing, that character is a lot like me, where it was just all fooling around and stuff like that. That's a lot of who I really am. So. Yeah. That was kind of fun to do, but the cursing and stuff, like, I swear and all, but not to that extent. <laughs> <laughs> Whose uh, idea was that? The cursing and all? Uh, not sure. That came from creative. Like, one day I was there and they told me I had a promo, and then I saw the promo and I was like, oh my. Okay, <laughs> time to make my mom proud. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, how do you get along with Vince Russo? Um, I thought Vince was a great guy. He was really good to work with. Um, he was always open for ideas, and um, he was really good when we were doing promos and stuff to kind of lead us in the direction that he was looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, Afro's calling back in. I think he wanted to redeem himself. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to know your opinions on Christy Hemme. On Christy Hemme, I think Christy Hemme is uh, great. I think that she has come so far, and especially for somebody that had to do the majority of her learning live on TV for WWE and at TNA, and that girl was there every morning when down at Impact to start training with AJ when she had big matches coming up, and even when she didn't, just so that she could learn, She's, I, I think she's amazing. Um, I thought she really improved um, before her injury. Um, I th- do you think it's um, really unfortunate because she seemed to be getting the knockout title also? Uh, yeah, I felt really bad that she got hurt. That was something that was really unexpected, I think, for her and upset her a little bit because she wasn't able to get into the matches anymore. But um, I think that she'll be back, and when she comes back, she'll be even better. Okay. 
I'm, I... I'm... What? Oh, I was just saying that. Thanks for calling in, man. Okay. Yeah, Thank bro. You. What? <laughs> I was just saying, we got the name yeah. right this time, so yeah. there you go. <laughs> Do you have an afro? Well, I don't. I never know why you tell us to call you afro. Just something weird I came up with. All right. Well, okay, well, thanks for calling in, man. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Uh, you got something from the board, Inchman? Julia writes in with a message board question. She wants to know, is there any female from the past or present that you haven't wrestled that you'd like to? Um, trying to think. I think I would have loved to have wrestled with Judy Martin. I think that she was really, really great in the ring. I loved all her stuff with the Glamour Girls and stuff like that. I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. Is it, um, do the knockouts or the, the other women, do they play any ribs on each other? Um, with the girls, the girls are so cl- closely, like, they're very close-knit, like, little group that a lot of times that we didn't really do stuff like that. Which is weird because the guys do it all the time, and the guys probably would rib us more than we would rib each other. <laughs> I think a lot of times we just don't have time to think of it, or we're not that creative. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Uh, have any <laughs> of the guys uh, played any ribs on you? The, any memorable ones? Uh, well, a lot of mine actually came from like independence. Like if I had a, there was one time I was going out to the ring and I was wearing a championship, and as I was going through the curtain, one of the guys ripped it off of me. <laughs> there's like stuff like that that would happen or I would come back after a match and my bag was gone <laughs> lots of stuff like that would happen mm-hmm. uh, Inchman was there another one from the board yes. oh, there's uh, people sending a lot of questions oh yeah Jeff Hardy lover she has a question she'd like to know what was your proudest moment in wrestling so far my proudest moment in wrestling so far would probably be being a part of the first ever crowning for the knockout championship because for me like that was kind of a part of history for TNA and it was great to be a part of it and to be the final two in the gauntlet match Mm -hmm. Uh, what did you what do you think of the knockout name itself (laughs) I think it's great because um, when it was first like it kind of has a mixed meaning where it could be knockout like drop dead gorgeous and then also knockout where we just kick ass the entire time i thought it was really creative Mm -hmm. uh barman if you had to choose between having chile and melissa just freak out and just kick you until she got tired or having mischief just stretch you like a pretzel where are you leaning towards probably mischief because melissa kicks really friggin hard (laughs) <laughs> I would rather be stretched by mischief. At least that way you can have some air or something. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been, uh, ha- what's like the worst injury you've had in the ring? Uh, the worst injury I had was probably uh, when I wrestled Awesome Kong in the chair to the head. Yeah. Because that one had me loopy for about like five days after that. I had to go stay with like family and stuff because I got a pretty good concussion off that one. <laughs> It, I think uh, that was the most stitches I got, too. I think I got nothing for that one. How many total stitches have you had? Uh, do you keep track? Uh, no, it just it, when I had started that whole hardcore knockout thing, every mistake that could possibly happen to split my face open happened. And um, within three months, I got 16 stitches. Mm-hmm. Now, um, is it hard to work with Big uh, Awesome Kong because she's you know, so big and powerful? or? No, what a lot of people don't know is that she's actually really, uh, she can move. Like, we did um, house shows right before I was released in New Orleans, and uh, she was throwing second rope drop kicks. She does high cross bodies. Like, she's not that, she's not that hard to move unless uh, she doesn't want to. Mm-hmm. There was a there was actually a match where she did she did rip me one time. Actually, we had a match, and I was trying to get her back in the ring, and she just let ass me. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Carino style. Yeah, yeah, she just wouldn't get in the ring. And I was pushing and rocking in place. It was like a little kid. It was great. Were you on the show when she had the uh, the wardrobe malfunction, as we say? Yes, that was, uh, that was, that was the, bound for, uh, the Bound for Glory, the knockout gauntlet for yeah. uh, Crowning Gale. Yeah, yeah, um, I was there. Did <laughs> she you got guys... peeled like a banana. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys rip her on that at all, or...? Yeah, I felt really bad at first, and then I got to the back and asked her if she was okay. She said she was good and going to get a new career in softcore porn. <laughs> well, we had her on. She said she was proud of the girls, so she didn't mind it. 
<laughs> yeah, if you, if you if you actually watch it back, you'll see her sit there and laugh. It's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so we got Zachary. Uh, hello. I was wondering what your favorite match was. My favorite match? Um, let me think. Let me think. Hmm. Has she been in or just her favorite match? That she was in. Okay. My favorite match I was in was, um, I would probably lean towards uh, there was a five-way right before Bound for Glory where it was Gail Kim, Tracy Brooks, Christy Honey, Jackie Moore, and myself. I think that one was great because the fans totally were ch- giving us hints that they would give the guys, and we actually proved that it was good to start the division. Um, that and probably, I'm trying to think, trying to think. I would probably say uh, there was a hardcore match. The one where I got the chair shot with me and uh, Awesome Kong was good because it was kind of showing a different style for everybody. Oh, were you proud that, um, you know, you weren't in the match, but just that the um, the Awesome Kong Gel Kid match was like a main event on Impact for uh, one of the weeks? Oh, hell yeah, I was. I was. I was so excited because finally the girls were making the main events, and I thought that was that was amazing. I was going to yeah. say awesome, but I think that would be like kind of redundant. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, area code two six zero. You just signed up, so never mind. Barbie, you got a question? Yeah, Spooky Molder from the chat room wants to know what's your weirdest experience with a fan. Weirdest experience with a fan? Um, right. hmm. I'm trying to think. There was one guy that made me sign his chest, and he was really, really hairy. There was that one. (laughs) And, of course, I did it. And then there was another one where um, a guy came up to me to uh, get a picture, and I'm not kidding you, he ended up soiling his pants right in front of me. And it was really crazy, and I had no idea how to react to it, because usually I'm pretty good, and I, I can trying to smooth out a situation, but yeah, that was that was one of them. Oh, man. That's a pretty good pickup, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was completely speechless. I was like, okay, so you just did that, and now it's time for you to walk away from me. <laughs> uh, area code 260. Who is this? Yes, this is Pillman 9mm from the chat room. How's it going? Yeah. You're not going to sell yourself I'm... while you do. <laughs> All right. That's why I hung up um, with you. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a question for Roxy. Um, if it's not too personal and she does not mind answering, um, it looks like TNA was uh, giving you a pretty good push. Um, they made you the hardcore diva and everything. What uh, what exactly led up to the release? Again, if it's not offensive and you don't mind my asking. Um, I'm, if I'm offensive at all, I, I'm actually not quite sure as to what happened um, when I was sent home. I was mostly told it was for budget reasons, and then when I was released, um, I was just told creative didn't have anything more for my character. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure where what happened. Maybe they just couldn't come up with anything else for me. So that's that's basically what I was told. Do you still have hopes of going to the WWE, though, at some point? For WWE, for sure, I would love to go there. I think it's great. They have a lot of great wrestlers that are there right now. They have... Uh, Natalia, they have Gail, they have Beth and Melina and all those girls. They're they're great. I would love to be there. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. Big fan. Oh, thank have you. Thanks for calling. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for calling, man. Uh, what did you think of working with the beautiful people? Oh, I loved it. I've known Velvet since um, I had first started around this area. <laughs> Because she is usually she was based out of this area at first, so we had been on the independent scene for a while together. And Angel, the first time uh, Angelina Love, the first time I'd ever met her was at TNA, and I loved working with both of those girls. Um, I get to work them sometimes on the independents now, and I'm always so happy to do so. Uh, Barb. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Dwayne from the chat room wants to know if you've got any opinions on freaking awesome Portia Perez. <laughs> yeah, I love Portia Perez. She's uh, 
I, I've worked a lot with her on the independent scenes, and I think that she's great. And she um, actually had a tryout with TNA, and I'm not sure why they didn't pick her up. I think she's she's a real, real good little worker and absolutely hilarious. When you first went to TNA, was uh, working in the six-sided ring, like, uh, was that hard to get used to? or? Oh, my God. There's, like, matches where I shot somebody into, like, a turnbuckle right next to the one that I was pulling them out of, and... <laughs> It was it was really messy for me at first until I think it was Samoa Joe actually pulled me aside and explained like turnbuckles are across from the other turnbuckle rope across from rope. Don't worry about it. It's just like working in a regular ring. And I was like, oh, that's a great way to look at it. And then I was okay. Yeah. Um, do you? I don't know if you follow Ring of Honor at all. You now they've got TV. Would you uh, think about working for them? I would work for them. I love Sarah Del Rey's work and Daisy Hayes. I think both of them are really talented. And I think it would be a lot of fun. I've, I've worked there before, so it would be fun to uh, go back. Yeah. Uh, Incher. Uh, yeah, I was actually um, wondering, because I heard this little tidbit of uh, information on the Howard Stern show. Kurt Angle, he uh, actually thinks that uh, Karen, she might have actually got with somebody else in TNA. I was wondering if you had any idea who it could have oh, been. Man. I want the dirt. Aww. I'm breaking out the dirt <laughs> warrant right now. <laughs> No, actually, um, I'm kind of one of those people that I kind of just kind of stay to myself. Like, I float around and I have friends with, I'm friends with everybody, but um, I never really try to get into any of that stuff. I try to kind of keep it drama free. Oh, <laughs> it's a lot easier that way. I said I had a dirt warrant. <laughs> <laughs> That's our big breakthrough idea is to uh, issue people dirt warrants. I think it failed. <laughs> That's exactly. awesome. Uh, Barbie, you got a question? Barb? Barbie. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. There you are. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. Wes from Delaware wants to know, what's the big diff between working independence and working for TNA? Um, well, for working with TNA, you're kind of na you're nationwide. You're on, if you work Explosion, you're all over the world at that point. Um there's lots of cameras, lots of backstage craziness for pre-tapes and running around like mad. And sometimes you'll have two or three matches in one day. And where you go to independence, you kind of work just for those people that are there instead of the people at home. Um, I read on your website that um, Killer Kowalski, like, uh, he let you train for free. Is that, uh, mm -hmm. is that what happened? Yeah, actually it is. He, um, he was always really, really sweet and, uh, he would let me hand out flyers for a school in order for me to train. So whenever somebody was doing an autograph signing nearby or WWE was in town, I would go and I'd be the flyer girl handing out flyers just so I could wrestle. All right. Like, uh, like, how old were you when, like, you knew, like, you really wanted to become a wrestler? 21. I, uh, I, I wasn't, like, I wasn't one of those people that watched when they were little and said, oh, I'm going to do that. I watched when I was little, but um, I would go to, like, Boston Garden and stuff with my mom and dad, but it was never anything that I had aspired to be. But I had a friend that decided to go to Killer Kowalski's, and he explained that there was this thing called a wrestling school because, for me, I totally believe that they just got in the ring and really hated each other and fought. Right. So I was completely blown away by this aspect of a wrestling school. And um, for about good three or four months, I would just sit there and videotape the classes for the guys so they could see what they needed to improve on. And then um, April Hunter actually talked me into getting in the ring. And after that, I just never stopped. Now, because um, we have a few um, our regular callers who are, uh, you know, trained to be wrestlers. Like, um, like when you first started, like, was it harder than you thought it would be or was it pretty much what you thought it would be? No, I um I was friends with a lot of the guys and stuff at the time, so I knew it would kick the crap out of me the second I got in there. But for whatever reason, I kind of just stuck around with it. I think it was just to see if I could do it. Yeah. Now, I don't know what this means because I don't know who this person is, but there's a couple people saying this on our uh, message board. Has anyone ever told you that you look like Dr. Rachel Maddow from MSNBC and Air America Radio? Uh, nobody's ever told me that, but I'm not quite sure who that is either. Yeah, I have no idea who that is either. But, uh, <laughs> like, when my hair started to grow back a little, I got Molly Ringwald, but that was like, <laughs> or Jamie, uh, Jamie Lee Smith, and like, that was about the most extensive I got. All right. Well, after the show, we'll have to Google that name and, uh, hopefully it's not an insult. 
Yeah, I told you. <laughs> My Lego like, Linda Beans of is like 80. <laughs> <laughs> what about Eric Cannon? Who is it? Eric Cannon. Mm-mm, I've never heard that name either. No? Mm. Okay. Mm. He's, a, he's a wrestler, I believe. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. Maybe I have. I'm really, sometimes I'm really bad with names, but if I see people, it's a lot easier for me to be like, oh, okay, I know him. He's got he a mohawk. Yeah. yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah mohawk. I know um, Judas, Judas, Judas Young, he wears the same plaid that I do, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, he was rocking it way before I was, though. So, if anything, I ripped him off, I'll say that, so that it'll look bad and he beats me up when I see him. Right. Uh, <laughs> Anybody in uh, in wrestling that you uh, travel with, or do you prefer to like travel by yourself? Um, I always traveled before, like with TNA and stuff like that. I would always travel. Usually, like if the girls are booked on house shows, all the girls will travel together and room together. But um, I was pretty much sure a brain with Taylor Wilde. <laughs> we still are really, really close and all that. And uh, she was the person I traveled with the most and worked out with, trained with, and all that stuff. Her and ODB. Uh, do you have any um, any road stories with those? Uh, I'm trying to think. There's lots and lots. Um, I think that there was actually like a house show where it ended up being me, Kip, and the beautiful people partying at a bar in Nashville and ended up on bars and singing karaoke and stuff like that. But there's no like really crazy ones where like anybody was like following us or anything like that. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll let everybody know. I don't want anybody to call in and spoil a loss because Roxy's a big loss fan, and I believe she's recording it right now. Yeah, I may jump through the phone and take someone's life. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't want anybody to check out roxy laveauorg We'll have the link right on the website and MySpace slash Wrestling Rocks. Uh, anything you'd like to tell your fans out there? Um, I would actually like to uh, thank all of them for that they've given me and they're still giving me uh, it really means a lot to me we really appreciate you coming on tonight Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me it was a lot of fun hey what's up it's the ODB on inyourheadonline.com just remember I'm not just another pretty face oh bam kiss my wet ass